Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the real estate investor show. We are uh, Carolina hard money. No, we're not. We're Carolina capital management. <laughs> wow. Uh, we are lenders are. in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the um, apply, now. apply now tab. <laughs> if you're a passive investor, click on the investor tab. No, accredited investor. Well, accredited <laughs> investor, sure. That's sure. right. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. <laughs> Wendy donates 30 minutes per person on Wednesday afternoons to talk anything about real estate. Uh, so uh, over in the chat side, it's either going to be on the right hand side or underneath your screen, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from sign up. She's usually booked uh, several months in advance. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think March 23 is my next opening. So what's really cool too, what's going on is we uh, virtually just spoke at cash flow expo. So, um, and it's not too late to get signed up with cash flow expo. Yep. Was I on that one? Mm -hmm. I was. All right. It'll, it'll, it'll be all right then. Sharub's going to show a little. <laughs> so it, it's three days. You got to love the live. <laughs> That's, That's right. why we do this. We yep. love the live. It's so much fun. It's three days yep. of. Anything real estate investor related. <laughs> yeah. Tracy and Fred uh, Rui, they're incredible people. This cash flow event, I think this is the fourth year. Yes. And the um, diversity of the speakers on it are incredible. Um, you can get on it now to watch it live, and it's 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 uh it's free. Yeah, it's free, and I mean it's anything in real estate. So it doesn't have to be just buying real estate. It can be buying notes backed by real estate. So there's all kinds of things to learn there. That's right. And you'll have the whole weekend to continue to watch it. But once it's gone, it's gone. But you can also buy the recording if you want to. So yeah. So register, it's free. You can watch it uh, all weekend long. It's free. Um, you do have to pay for the recordings if you want. Yeah. But uh, check, check it out. And I, I think we have a, a link on it too, that we can put over there in the chat box or right. and Rand, Randy uh, apparently doesn't think I bond very well. So I have to have my own bond day um, <laughs> to help people bond with me. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I love it. And, and we've got a couple people on here that have watched the show and I came in here just before we started that my phone's already blowing up from it. So that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, we love that event. It is just so good. Yep. So good. So without further ado, we have special graphics for our special guest. So you thought it was going to have your name in there, didn't you? Josh? <laughs> yeah, didn't pay for that. It's like little R2D2 coming yeah. in the picture. I love it. So, <laughs> so uh, we, Wendy and I have known Josh for a while. Uh, Josh is with Lone Star, and I'm going to have to ask him how they came up with the Lone Star uh, Tax and Consulting. They specialize in con consultation, uh, tax preparation, and planning, business uh, consulting, um, structure, offer fractionalized CFO services, which as is well. really timely. I mean, we we are looking for a for fractional, fractional CFO, CFO right yeah. now. And uh, listen, it's very difficult for small businesses to really justify having a full-time CFO. Mm -hmm. And if you can look at doing it fractionally, uh, it makes a lot more sense. And you need uh, fractional CFOs because they look at your books differently mm -hmm. than your typical uh, CPA. There's and numbers that uh, you can pull out that, really make a difference in uh, scaling your business. That's right. It's a map. Right. 
<clears throat> it's a map on the the direction you need to go. And, we, and Josh yeah. is in our power room uh, mastermind that we go to as well. Um, uh, he's, uh, our, our, I think he's in Collective Genius as well. Um, but anyway, but you can ask him. Yeah, because he's he's <laughs> well, here. Welcome, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to drag you on. Yeah, like, like, have yeah. you ever waited so long to get on a? Yeah, make show? people. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh. How are we doing this morning? Thanks for having yeah. me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was just asking you earlier too. Are you finally taking a breather after the uh, first month of the of the year, trying to get all those things out? And you were telling me that your company has grown threefold here uh, recently. That's incredible. Yeah, over, over this last year, um, I know a lot of businesses struggled over the, the time of the pandemic, but I know for, um, and I, I probably say this for, for a lot of accounting firms in general, um, our space has absolutely grown and you probably understand the need, especially with businesses going through some, some unique uh, um, situations here over the, over the really uh, about two years ago, right about now when mm -hmm. things just kind of really changed for, for most business owners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's amazing too. Um, I mean, we've experienced just getting our arms around really um, our KPIs and, and really understanding where we're going. But as a, a fractional CFO, you get even deeper, even more detailed, right? Yeah. So usually when you uh, start going down the road of uh, when a because you hear sometimes, okay, do I need a fractional CFO? What do they do? Um, and so that is, um, can be very much a unique uh, process, uh, depending on the client, what they're looking for and what they're needing help uh, with. And also depending on what sort of the, the phase of business that they're in. So um, uh, most of the time when a, uh, when a business is looking uh, to determine whether or not they need a fractional CFO, uh, it is a situation, as you mentioned, kind of in the intro, as far as they're not able to hire a full-time CFO inside of their business. And they want somebody to take a little bit of a, diff a diff uh, unique look into their business. Sometimes it may be uh, from an end of, okay, we are, our business is profitable, but we're wanting to transition into uh, looking into scaling this. Uh, is our structure uh, one uh, that, and, and it can either be from kind of the quote unquote, the legal structure end, but uh, going beyond that, just from a, from an organizational structure. Uh, and do we have kind of everything there that we need to be able to take the next step in the business uh, all the way to what sort of KPIs do I need to be measuring? So I know the business is growing, but I'm not really sure exactly why, or what do I need to be looking inside, uh, looking at inside of my business uh, to uh, what dial do I need to turn, so to speak, uh, to be able to take this business into the next, uh, into its next phase. Now, are um, you focusing on certain niches of businesses or, or is that, is it any business you can take on? No, we are very, very niche. Um, as far as who we work with. So um, most of the time, and I literally this morning, I sat down and, you know, Facebook messages coming in and just saying, sorry, you know, we're, just, we're not able to, you know, as far as you're not fitting the avatar or whatever the case may be, as far as who we work with. But um, most of the, most of the businesses that we work with have, if you think of the kind of those traditional five phases of business, kind of have that startup and then you move into kind of that perseverance into profit. Um, so the, when you're kind of in that world, it's not generally not the, not the area that, that we work with. Um, so if you're trying to trying to just figure things out, so to speak, um, and uh, you're just trying to figure out uh, profit, there are wonderful uh, individuals out there. And I'm sure you probably had uh, some of them on this show that really kind of focus kind of uh, as a fractional CFO um, and even as an accountant that works kind of in those areas. We really focus more on businesses that are already profitable, moving to scale, even to legacy or succession. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And it's completely different what you look at in your business. And it's, it's a complete different mindset of the owner too. So a business owner's mindset when they're in, when they're in perseverance, uh, uh, trying to move to profit is completely different uh, than someone trying to move out. Uh, so you're kind of moving from a uh, business, just kind of being that traditional either owner operator or the traditional kind of EOS type of structure to where you have a, a visionary and an integrator uh, to where you have a more of a complex business structure, which you are going to have to have uh, to move from, uh, from that profit stage into, um, uh, into scaling uh, and ultimately uh, succession or legacy planning stage. Gotcha. Yeah. What are some of the new, um, from what you've seen this year, what are some of the things that you think business owners, who are, you know, in, in a 
they're, they're, they're in that scaling up mode. What, what are some of the things that they really need to be concerned about with some of the new tax strategies, the changes that have come up for this year? What are some of your top? Well, that's kind of the interesting thing. We spent so much time last year kind of preparing for kind of a lot of disruption. Um, and you think about everything. I know you have a number of uh, individuals that work with you. They, they may have self-directed IRAs, for example. And uh, we were expecting uh, kind of a lot of disruption in those rules. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were expecting uh, some some major changes as it relates to the uh, to the tax laws. And guess what? None of it happened. Um, so uh, <laughs> kind of this whole uh, kind of all these uh, these ideas um, that were put out there uh, by the administration and um, uh, they, they essentially failed. And I think that's probably a good thing for the most part. Um, that uh, that they did, uh, and not making a political statement here at all. Um, we can if we want to go there, but we may we may, <laughs> we may lose some uh, lose some of your audience. But That's okay. uh, but from a from a pure from a pure business end, um, it is always generally best for business uh, that um, the government kind of keeps their hands out of things, especially when uh, you know when you're looking at a situation when you're raising taxes, when you're doing those types of uh, which is essentially what this was going to do uh, for 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 most business owners. Um, so I'm kind of leaving the whole individual side out of it. But for most business owners, we were all going to be impacted by it in a material way in some form or fashion, uh, whether it's going to be in our retirement portfolios or whether it was going to be in our active business. Um, it was going to be a situation to where we're just going to add one more uh, hurdle into what we're already dealing with um, inside of our businesses. So fortunately, as of right now, we're kind of still continuing to deal with the, with the status quo. Uh, and we're still uh, kind of dealing with the um, uh, with kind of all of those tax benefits that were put in place uh, under the prior administration with the tax cut and job tax cut and jobs act and, and so forth uh, that we're able to take uh, take advantage of. And you know we can give a lot of thanks to um, uh, God, of course, but um, Jeff Watson, John Heyer, uh, Quincy Long, pe people that are in our network that really. Um, just used a megaphone, letting everybody know what was going on and giving us steps one, two, and three, what we needed to do to, to band together and, yep. and fight this. So, you know, thank God for our network that we have and, and uh, um, how organized it is to be able to, to really make a change. I mean, that was a, um, I, I think a, a great item of success for us to look on and say, Hey, you know what, we can make a difference when we band together. Um, to try to make those changes. It definitely worked. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's a wonderful group of individuals who really did a wonderful job of putting a lot of uh, good information out there, making people aware um, to uh, as far as what truly was going on, instead of just listening to either what the politicians were saying or what the what the media was saying in regards to this. But how, this, how is this truly going to impact you? Uh, how is this going to impact your business? How is this going to impact your retirement? Well, I'm sorry. I was going to say it was lobbying the right people too, because a lot of the politicians uh, don't understand self-directed mm -hmm. retirement accounts either and making them aware of what was uh, about to come down. I, I did want to talk to you about businesses now having to make uh, investments that they didn't think they were going to have to make. And one of them is labor and one of them mm -hmm. is uh, materials. And obviously labor is, either the lack thereof <laughs> and the prices of labor. And then of course the uh, material shortage <laughs> of materials <laughs> and then the, the cost of materials. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to address that a little bit in businesses and how they're scaling and having to invest in stuff that are more uh, productivity related versus having to come, you know, bring on labor stuff that will somewhat eliminate the need for labor. <laughs> yeah. So, and in regards to the production end and kind of dealing with supply chain issues, is, um, that that's kind of really not an area that I work in too much as far as trying to advise clients on, you know, what are you going to deal with when you have kind of a, kind of a shortage on that end. But I think for, for most, uh, most businesses, they are dealing with a, uh, we can talk about supply chain as it relates to, uh, to hiring employees, finding good people and how do you go about doing that? Um, it is something that we struggle with here. I mean, we increased our size of our team 3x last year, and it was a painful process. We tried, mm -hmm. you know, quite a few different strategies. We we hired people to try to help us. We you know tried to to do things internally, and and it was a it was a painful process. Um, so you're going to have to kind of go through that if you're trying to find uh, good people. You may have to, in kind of what you feel in your opinion, is overpay for people. 
Mm. Um, and I don't know if that if that necessarily is um, uh, is always necessarily a bad thing um, to uh, um, to do so to kind of uh, maybe it's kind of one of those things now at this point uh, that from a wage end is naturally going to it's naturally going to increase. Uh, and we're, we're seeing that um, and we have seen that over this uh, over this past year. But I think kind of taking that next step of you're going to have to be very purposeful uh, in that particular process, maybe have to be a little bit more involved in that process than just hiring someone or just kind of leaning on uh, um, uh, kind of a, I'll say we're familiar with lead gen, but kind of going to a place where we're going to try to find leads as it relates to hires to where we're going to be a little more purposeful and maybe reach within our network to try to find to find good people. Uh, And then taking the next step of really um, uh, building out your tech stack. You're really going to have to learn, lean into, uh, lean hard into technology. And uh, as we kind of move forward, that is one area. And if you think about, um, think about a a fast food restaurant, you kind of go in now. I was reading yesterday on Facebook, uh, they went into a local, uh, into a local, um, actually they're a national chain, um, but uh, into their local uh, coffee shop. And when they, when they went in there, uh, literally you're doing your own ordering on screens, you're, you know, mm-hmm. you, you do your order, not even interacting with mm-hmm. anyone. You're paying someone there. And then, you know, the really kind of the only interaction is that person that goes and puts that, that coffee cup on the uh, on the shelf. Why is that? Well, that company had to learn into learn to lean into technology. Now, we as a consumer may complain about that, uh, but we also have to realize that we, we kind of created that as well. Um, uh, meaning that your average individual, you know, they don't maybe they just don't want to do the work, whatever the case may be. So um, uh, so. Every business had to do that. We've had to do that here. We invested a ton of money. We hired a person uh, that uh, to come in just to uh, just to build out our processes, to build out the technology uh, for us to be able to kind of replace people with technology because we couldn't find the people. So how do we how do we go about doing that? So for a business owner, they have to look inside of their business. What sort of uh, what in their business can be systemized? Mm. Now it is going to take it is going to take an investment of time. It's going to take an investment of money, and, it, and it's painful. Uh, my team will tell you. I mean, sitting down in a conference room and kind of building out these processes, trying to get out of my head. This is how we do things to where we can pass that information on, uh, and then uh, make that a process efficient. If you're kind of a visionary or a business owner, that is not that's not a whole lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> but you're but you're going to have to go through that process. And so, um, so it's something that we regularly do that we, we spent a ton of money last year on technology. Uh, I think we probably spent close to six figures on technology at the firm level last year. Um, and because we knew that I could have taken that hundred thousand dollars and hired people to do the work, but the people just weren't there. So we invested in technology, we built out the processes and then we trained our existing team on the processes. So like for this last month, we kind of doing, doing all this compliance with W2s and 1099s and everything else. We built out that entire process. Uh, and then um, what does that look like? How do we take the information out of the client's books to kind of go through, create a, take that data, uh, massage the data into a, into a spreadsheet, display that out to the client and all that. A lot of this was done via technology. Uh, and, um, and so kind of looking in, in, inside of your business, what can you do as far as building out your tech stack? What can you, what can you lean on? What sort of technology is out there uh, that you can utilize to help make, uh, make your business more efficient? Uh, to where you're not going to have to uh, need as many people inside of your business to do the same thing. That's great. That's great. I I saw this morning, you know, well, yesterday they did the ADP numbers uh, and showed that there was over 300,000 jobs lost uh, in the month of January. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the same time this morning, they came out with the uh, productivity numbers. So inside of that same month, uh, job productivity went up 6%. So we've lost a bunch of jobs, but the people that are working produce 6% more uh, than they did previously. So uh, businesses have been taking that, those steps to uh, lean on technology to, to do a little bit better. You have people that are also, even though it's a job loss, a lot of that hourly stuff that uh, they count as a, a job loss. It just means they weren't getting paid because they were out sick or whatever. That doesn't mean they're, um, they've quit or they've been laid off. They're just temporarily not working. Yeah. But a lot of people that are working at home are actually, uh, can be more productive than in the office. Um, some people can't, obviously there are people that need to have a little more direction when they're by themselves, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> Sure. Uh, those people need to be in an office environment where they have people around them, but, uh, you can find uh, really good people that, 
uh, can work on their own. It's just, uh, and like you said, it's, it's a matter of finding the right, you know, butt for the right seat. Yeah. And it is a painful process. <laughs> and you have to look inside of your business. Uh, during, look back to uh, 2020, a couple of years ago, when, you know, pretty much everything was shut down. Mm-hmm. And uh, our business was looked at as, as an essential business. So we were able to come into the office if we so chose. But I gave my, you know, my team the option. You want to go home or do you want to come into the office? And um, uh, and then, you know, a couple of them t- decided to try to, to try to go home and, uh, and, and work from home. And it, literally within a couple of days, they said, you know, they were they were texting me, hey, can we come into the office? So when you kind of take a look at this, you know, uh, and, and, the, and the reason being, and, and it, may, it wasn't because things were awful at home, it's just that you have to look at the culture of your business. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times when you kind of go through and you're looking at, um, you're right, if you, you know, the people have to be highly managed, whatever the case may be, you have to, and, 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 and they almost have to be micromanaged to a certain, uh, um, uh, to a certain extent. You know, people are going to need in the office, but um, really have to kind of make sure that you're maintaining your culture, whatever decision you make as it relates to uh, when you start hiring on uh, virtual people, um, because you can lose ultimately the culture of your business um, by uh, if you kind of go full gung ho on hiring a virtual team, even hiring VAs, that type of thing. Um, uh, yeah, you can grow a business that way, but you can lose, lose your culture in the, in the yeah. process. I, want, I wanted to take you back to the, the fractional CFO because I know, and I'm going to use simpler terms. Uh, sorry, I'm making it very layman. Um, when you're when you're when you have people coming to you asking for the um, direction of how to move from like a shop to a company, because once they start making that movement, that's when they're probably going to need that fractional CFO. What are the biggest hurdles or or items that people can do to make that jump that you've seen in your experience to help people move that process along? Or is there anything? Cause I, I, it can't just be luck. <laughs> right. Well, um, anytime I think you're, you're made, you're made a decision to whether go into business or to move from one phase of a business into it, into the next is to um, really kind of take a look at the, the a few things. First of all, how much time am I willing to invest in, uh, in this next move. So whatever I, I, I end up doing, I'm going to decide that I'm going to invest this amount of time into either starting this business or moving to this next phase of business. The second area you need to look at is capital. So you're going to sit down and you're going to look and say, OK, this is what I'm going to estimate that I need as it relates to, to people. This is what I'm, what I'm going to need as it relates to technology. Uh, this is what I'm going, going to need, whether it's inventory, whatever the case may be. This is the amount of capital that I'm going to need. And then uh, how much time am I willing to give this? Um, if you kind of go into any phase of business with a kind of a predetermined amount of time with a predetermined amount of money uh, that you're going to invest, that's going to kind of, first of all, help you provide those those uh, those guardrails. Once you've done that, then you uh, you're going to take the next step of trying to determine what sort of the KPI we need to look at as I as I move through this to make sure that I'm looking at the uh, looking at the right dials in my business uh, that I need to, to turn, because usually what um, what what you used. And it, and it could be every everything from the people that you have to even the advisors that you use. OK, mm-hmm. uh, they they are probably going to change the people that generally got you to the place that you're at now. Many mm-hmm. times are not going to be the same people that are going to get you to the next to the next right. area of business. So it may be a situation to where um, uh, you're also going to be kind of leveling up the people that you work with, both internally and externally in your business. Um, so uh, there's a there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, but it's really going to kind of be really sitting down and saying, okay, this is the amount of, uh, this is who I need to put on my team to get me to the next level. Uh, and this is the amount of money I'm going to need to invest to get me to the next level. And this is what I'm going to need. This is the types of decisions I'm going to be, I'm going to have to make uh, as I move into the next, next, uh, next phase of business. Yeah. You have, um, I know probably for a lot of listeners on, on a particular um, platform are real estate investors. Yeah. So when you kind of go through and you look at uh, historically, you may have looked at, OK, this is how I'm uh, you may have focused primarily as the owner of your business on, you know, on, on lead gen. And, you know, how do I find that next deal and all this other type of thing? Well, guess what? When you're getting into and that's all fine if you're on that front of the business. But if you're trying to go to a point where you're uh, where you're trying to build out a, a legacy business, that type of thing, you're no longer involved in that process. You're going to have to have people that are going to be that are making those decisions for you. You can't be involved in that day to day anymore. And so um, it so becomes a process if you think about it of, okay, am I, uh, what am I, what am I looking at? And I'm going to, everything from, I'm going to be going out and using different processes to find the deals 
to I'm going to have different people involved in trying to find those deals because I'm going to have to move myself out of that, uh, out of that. <laughs> and so um, to be able to find those people to where, OK, this is what you need to measure. This is what you need to look at. And then uh, and then you as the business owner, what do you need to be looking at? What do you need to be involved in in your business? And uh, and all of that's going to change. So when you're bringing in a, a fractional CFO, for example, it's identifying uh, helping you identify or helping you kind of work your way through the weeds and not get bogged down. But what do I really, truly need to be looking at uh, inside of my business and even outside of my business from an advisory standpoint to be able to help uh, help me move my uh, my business into the into the next phase? Yeah, no, well said. Yeah, because we've always said, like, if you can't if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. But then at the right. same at the same token, you can be met. You can be measuring the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Like like you just said, it's like knowing what to measure, what, you know, what were interesting numbers to us four years ago aren't necessarily the interesting numbers to us now. They're not what's pushing us along. So I, I, you hit the nail on the head. I, that was great. And it, it can be a painful decision having to fire mom. <laughs> since she's not getting you to that next level. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, mom's keeping your books in, you know, it's, you know, she's, she tries hard. She does all right, but she's not quite there for a multi-million dollar company. Yeah, we we really just started quantifying the value of each individual employee. You know what what it is that they're monetarily bringing to the table, and yeah, like a EBITDA per head. Yeah, and yeah, all all of that. That yeah. was very interesting for us to go down that road and um, and really see where our strong points were and where our our weak points are. That you know what we need to be um, uh, changing and improving on mm -hmm. uh, really good stuff. Excellent, Josh. Listen, um, it's got, uh, Sharu, do you mind uh, pulling up Josh's, uh, link? Is that where people can go to? Yeah, that's our, yeah, that's, that's our, uh, our company's website. Um, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. You can uh, reach out to me there as well. Personally. Do, do you have a preferred, uh, contact source? Um, for people that want to get in touch with you about uh, fractional uh, CFO. Yeah. Just go to the website. There's a whole, there's kind of like a, you know, contact, contact uh, area on, uh, on there as well as all the, all the content that I put out there, my podcast, whatnot, you can find that all on the, on the website. So what kind of stuff do you have on your podcast? <laughs> well, I uh, actually just put out the 133rd episode this morning uh, of awesome. the podcast. So I've been doing it, I guess, almost three years now. Um, and it's been it's been quite the journey. But it's everything from uh, from just kind of general practical business helps uh, all the way to uh, some tax strategies, finances in your business, et cetera. So we kind of really run the gamut. It is a, a very kind of a general, but it is really focused more heavily on on, on entrepreneurs looking to grow their business. Uh, and um, today's podcast, uh, we, we had a gentleman on that uh, kind of talking about your website, um, which was, was kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting topic that we, we dove into. That's which, awesome. You have a really good website. We, we checked that out. Yeah, so. we oh, like thank that. you. And then also we have to find out where'd you get the name load star? Right. So uh, I love I love the question. And if you go to the website, I actually have a little video on kind of how we how we went about it. So uh, as um, as an accounting firm, you know, for years, it was just had my name on it. So it was Belk Accounting, Belk and Associates just had my last name on it. Uh, and as the business grew and and really kind of almost as a as a legacy piece, decided to take my my name off. Now, when I went through a whole branding exercise uh, with the company before um, and uh, kind of pulling out of my head what sort of vision that I want to set for the company, we had determined that we come up with a it was a, a kind of a look of a compass mm -hmm. on the on our old logo. And uh, so when I decided to go ahead and take the, my name off uh, off the business and, uh, and wanted to kind of keep with the whole concept of giving direction. Hmm. So a low star is, is kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of a basically a star that kind of gives direction. And if you kind of think of more from a, um, you know, from a ship and something that we'll look at to give direction. So I wanted to kind of uh, stay with that particular theme. So that's how we came up with the name. Uh, it's kind of as a, basically it's a star uh, that, that kind of gives direction. It's really what we try to do as a firm is to, to help provide it. direction for our clients. He doesn't just it. give cardinal directions. He gives ordinals as well. That's so. right. I love <laughs> it. I love it. That's awesome. That's great. Listen, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was great content today. Mm. Uh, I'm sure people are going to check out your website. And the podcast, and the podcast for sure. Podcast. That's awesome. And ho hopefully we can get you some subscribers as well. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Appreciate it's it. great talking to you today and hopefully I'll see you in a see you at the power short, room. short uh, <laughs> period of time. Yeah. Um, Foot March, right. first, first part of March. Yeah, right. that's right. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us again on the real estate investor show. 
hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. Yes. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.